So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk about sexual grooming gangs in the UK and what is happening in this country. If you'd like to listen, I'd ask you to move in a bit so I don't have to project my voice so much. So, I'm reading from a report in The Independent. It states this, the fight against grooming gangs is hindered by fear of being branded a racist, says officials. An inquiry official calls for the ethnicity of data of grooming gangs to be recorded so that the scale and nature of the abuse is understood and can be acted upon. The fight against grooming gangs is still hampered by authorities' fears that they could be called racist for documenting abusers' ethnicity, an official has said. A damning report by the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse found child sexual exploitation continues, listen to the next bit, because it's really important, continues in all parts of England. All parts of England. There are still gangs sexually grooming children in this country, in England and Wales. A decade after a national scandal. So in 10 years since the EDL forced the British government to tackle the sexual grooming gangs that were occurring in Rotherham, the situation continues in every part of England. The report said that children were being abused in the most degrading and destructive ways amid extensive failures by local authorities and police forces. John O'Brien, secretary to the inquiry, called for a cultural change to ensure that child sexual exploitation can be understood and prevented. We need to break the culture where people are worried that they may be accused of being a racist just because they record factual information. That is where, ladies and gentlemen, progressive politics has led our society in the UK. We are unwilling to call a spade a spade for political correctness. For the altar of social cohesion and multiculturalism, we have conspired to hide the facts behind sexual grooming of children that have occurred in every part of England and Wales. The mass grooming of children on an industrial scale has been covered up by your councils, by your police, by your social services, by your child protection agencies. And they have done it because the liberal, secular, progressive state is weak and guided by a hypocrisy that would rather protect the cult and multiculturalism than defend children. And so it will not understand the problem and it will not deal with the problem. And let us be clear, Asian grooming gangs is a racial slur. These are not Asian grooming gangs. These are Muslim grooming gangs. These are not Sikh grooming gangs, or Hindu grooming gangs, or Christian Asian grooming gangs. These are Muslim grooming gangs. Go and look 
and do the contrast on the national statistics in Rotherham between the Asian community and the Muslim community or in Oldham. This is not an Asian grooming gang problem and it is a slur against Hindus and Sikhs and Christian Asians to call it an Asian grooming gang problem. It isn't. So what, soon I will take questions, I promise. So what, ladies and gentlemen, after this point, so what, ladies and gentlemen, should we Christians do about this? What should we as Christians do? We Christians must stand up to the grooming gangs. And I want to say, Christians, that we should crusade against this injustice in political activism. The Bible says, and listen, in James chapter 1, verse 27, religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father is this, to visit the orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep one's self unstained from the world. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 says this, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's case. Because of the music, please come closer. I can't keep up this volume. It says in Proverbs, open your mouth to the mute. I will take questions shortly, patience. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. Psalms chapter 8, verse 82, sorry, verse 2 to 4. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. What is more wicked than a gang of Muslim pedophiles grooming children? Christians, I call you to crusade. I call you to stand up against these grooming gangs by uniting, soon, soon, uniting with vigilante groups that hunt down pedophiles, that hunt down child groomers and take them to the police. I want to be clear, I'm not talking or calling you to violence. I'm calling you to action, to go and join the groups that are doing the job that the police are not doing, are not doing by entrapping those paedophiles, those groomers that are hunting and pursuing children. As a Christian, you can act, you should act. If you're a Christian police officer, if you're a Christian lawyer, go to these groups and advise them how they can work within the law, how they can work best with the police to effectively trap these child groomers and effectively take them to the police. If you're a priest or a pastor, invite these groups to your church, bless them and pray for them in what they do. If you're a Christian who knows he is called to arms and works as a security guard, take your license and your skill with these groups to defend them as they trap 
and hunt down these paedophiles. Christians, organize yourselves. Unite across denominations. Unite across congregations. Organize yourselves. Train yourselves. Mobilize yourselves and resist. It is Christian, it is biblical to crusade against the jihad of child grooming that is occurring in England and you can do it legally. And if, ladies and gentlemen, you should entrap a paedophile priest or pastor because they exist as well, then all the more power to you for doing so. Now you can ask a question. Questions. How is it that you are now talking that it's um, Muslims? Like before that, it wasn't even a crime. Okay, Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist, Fagan has a group of children. This was a very common thing in the. Shall I reply to that question? You had loads of. Okay, so we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Okay. How is it that you blame Muslims? Yes. Exclusively Muslims. Yeah. Let alone the, um, the lots of other organisations. In fact, every single organisation that deals with children can, um, you'll find this is the type of stuff that happens. And before 1900, it wasn't even illegal. Okay, so let okay, me address so that point. You cannot talk like biblical truth going back thousands of years when it wasn't a crime. Thank you, sir. Let me, let me address that no, point. No, you crap on. Right. For hours and JC, hours do you want to change your microphone? Because yeah, I'm going to reply to this guy. Yeah. So let us just change the mic before I reply. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, the question is, why did I exclusively blame Muslims? You may have noticed, ladies and gentlemen, that I ended what I said by saying that there are paedophile priests and paedophile pastors and they should also be hunted down. Paedophilia happens in every part of our society. But, ladies and gentlemen, the point that I was talking about is that our society has conspired because of political correctness and multiculturalism to sweep under the rug one particular aspect of this problem. It's not controversial to call out the paedophile priests. Everyone agrees that the Roman Catholic Church has a problem with paedophile circles infiltrating its ranks. And they're quite happy, quite happy, quite happy, quite happy, happy, ladies and gentlemen, to call out that paedophilia. But why do we mask and obfuscate the paedophilia in the Muslim community? Why can't we talk about it in the same explicit terms? Now, the spoiled child to my left also talked about the fact that child marriage and sex with children was legal in the past. And he is absolutely right to point that out. But the ignorance of past generations should not be used to obfuscate the crimes occurring in our generation. We're dealing with our problems. And the spoiled child wasn't even listening to the answer. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any other question? Any other questions going once? Any other questions going twice? Any other questions going three times? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. I appreciated your attention and the politeness in which you listen. I hope my words spur you to something good. And I want to state again, Christians should crusade against sexual grooming of children. This is a call 
to act within the law because, ladies and gentlemen, what we've got in our society of vigilante groups who do not operate within the law and because they don't operate in unity with the law, they are endangering prosecutions. They're endangering successful prosecutions. There's a case that happened in Northern Ireland recently where a judge decided not to send a man who was caught bang to rights sending sexually explicit images and messages to a child to, to prison. He released him on bail. Why? Because the judge had said he had been humiliated by the vigilantes that caught him and that caught him because the police didn't catch him. Ladies and gentlemen, our courts are dominated by political activists who are obscuring justice to uphold their own progressive sentiments. Liberal progressive culture and ideology is failing in our society and we need to return to a muscular Christian faith. But those of you who heed the call to join with groups who go out and do the police's job for them, I urge you, I beg you, learn the law. Talk to lawyers and barristers and police officers about how you can do what you do in an effective way that will, will result in successful prosecutions. Any questions? Going once, going twice, going three times. Thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. So, I'd like to go on to another topic.